Hey, it's Dirk from Sentry. In this video, we're gonna walk through setting up the repo that we're gonna to use to connect Sentry and GitHub. Feel free to skip this video if you don't need any information about how to set up a GitHub repo. Also, this is only covering github.com. Not gonna cover GitHub Enterprise right now. We'll cover that on a future video. Assuming you already have a GitHub account set up, find the new button to create a repository. This floats around, sometimes it's here. Uh, you can also find it in a few other places within GitHub, but click on that and you should be taken to this create new repository page. Here we need to name this. I like to name it the same thing as the project that I'm using within Sentry, just to be really clear. Uh, you don't have to do this. There's no requirement that they're the same, but I like to do that just because I think it's easier. So let's call this React. Um, I could type Sentry GitHub. I'm gonna leave the description blank. You can make it public or private. I'm gonna make it private for now. I'm gonna add a readme just so that when I clone it, I don't get a warning or error message. It's gonna get overwritten anyway in a future step. One minor point here, if you prefer to do this the inverse, meaning start a Git repo on your local machine and then push that up to github.com, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter for this purpose. I just prefer it this way. Do it however you like. And then I'm gonna ignore the git ignore and the license, we'll add those later. So let's create the repository. It's gonna take us directly into our repository since we initialized it with a file. To clone this, I just need the link. So if I grab this GitHub link and copy it, I can now flip over to my local machine and terminal and I'm in my GitHub folder here. If we LT this, if I can put my fingers on the right keys, then we can see I have a bunch of existing local uh, repos. Some of these are pushed to Git, some are not. Um, if I want to clone a new one, then all I need to do is issue a Git clone and then, uh, not clones, clone, and then paste that URL in. And it's going to create a folder called React Sentry GitHub, which matches exactly what we set up earlier. Now I can go ahead and change directories into that folder. And we can see what's in here, which is nothing but that readme that we initialized the repository with. For purposes of this video series, we're gonna be using Vite, which is a front-end framework. It supports a bunch of different front-end frameworks, Vue and uh, React and Svelte and a bunch of others. Uh, to initialize that, we're gonna go uh, uh, run a command called create vite latest. This dot is important in this case because I want to create the project in the directory we just CD'd into. If you don't do this, when you go through the wizard, it's gonna create a new subdirectory and I don't want another subdirectory. It's gonna say, do I wanna remove the existing files? And I will remove the existing files. We're gonna be using React as our front-end framework and JavaScript, not TypeScript. And once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and LT this and we can see that Vite created a bunch of extra stuff here that we didn't have before. At this point, I can clear and we can go ahead and run an NPM install to pull down all of the dependencies that Vite set up in the package.json. You can ignore the warnings, there shouldn't affect our project at all. And if I clear this one more time, we're now ready to open this up in our local editor. So whatever that happens to be, I use Visual Studio Code, but you could use uh, really anything here. The command to open this is just code and then the, uh, the um, directory, which is a dot, the current directory. And now we can see we're in here and this is what Vite set up for us. So now we have our GitHub repo cloned and we have our Vite configuration ready. In the next videos, we're gonna go ahead and set this project up. We're going to wire it to our Sentry uh, project and start collecting errors. And then we're gonna go through the process of configuring the different aspects of the GitHub integration and explaining what they do and why they're valuable. Stick around.